Welcome students, let's take a look at our first set of notes for this class. Uh, you'll see that I have open the PowerPoint over print statements. Uh, so I'll keep that open on the screen, but I'm also going to go ahead and set up BlueJay on my screen as well so I can show you some things as I go. So I've got BlueJay open. I will open a new project and I'm just I will do this on my desktop, but you should not. You should always put it on your H drive. I will just call this lab one. So here we have our Blue Jay project, lab one. And I'm going to create a new class. And I want to have a main method with it. So I'm going to call this demo. So this is how I would recommend that you have your screen set up. Here I have my code. Here I can quickly jump up and compile and run the code. And over here I have some notes or instructions as to what I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm saving some space up here because I want to put my output window up here whenever I uh, have a program that generates some output. Alright, so what do we need to learn? Printing to the screen. So Anytime you're learning a new programming language, typically you start off with the infamous Hello World program. And to do that, we need to learn a print statement. Print statement is just a command that uh, will print something to the screen. Pretty simple. How do I use the print statement? Well, I started off with some skeleton code. This is called skeleton code. Um, and for Java to run, you have to have these basic elements in your program but I've included that for you in the template so whenever you go to new class if you choose blank class with main it'll get you set up with all of your skeleton code you may need to make some small changes here and there uh, but that'll become clearer to you later on and here it shows you two basic print statements in Java so let me just try that out this area right here is where you should be typing your code so I'm going to try out system dot out dot print line I go with the top one print text goes here I'm putting an exclamation mark on there because it's way more exciting when I do it than when I read it from the notes okay so here's a quick tip about blue jay you'll notice that the alignment here it has system dot out dot print put all the way in the left margin but that's not really a good way to do that technically it should go here because that just looks nicer you can tell that this line of code is contained within our main method but let me show you a quick way of fixing that if you have lots of code that's uh, not where it's supposed to be there's a keyboard shortcut control shift I so watch what happens when I do control shift I so it just aligns everything for me exactly where I need it to be let me point out something real fast in Blue Jay. You see you have a green area, you have a yellow area, and then you have a white area. Uh, the colors on here just help you to visually see the organization of your code. So all of the code that we're doing right now is going to be in the, the white area inside of the yellow, which is inside of the green. If you're going outside of that area, then you're probably typing it in a space that won't be seen by the compiler and might throw errors. Alright, so let's see if this works. In order to run code, it first has to be compiled. Compiling is when the program, in this case BlueJay, turns your Java code into machine code, something that your processor can understand. So you'll see the lines up here indicate that we haven't yet compiled our code. If I hit this compile button, the lines went away. We had no errors, so we're good to go. We can jump up here, right click, and say run our main method hit OK and there's our output window I'm going to throw that over here and you can see exactly what it did text goes here we could change this code compile run and see that it see how the changes occurred alright next up 
How do I use a print statement? Uh, well, just like any other uh, statement in Java, it has to end with a semicolon. So notice I put that semicolon on there. This is true of all statements in Java. But if you look over here, you'll notice there's some things that don't have semicolons. There's no semicolon here. There's no semicolon here. Why is that? Well, it's because of this bold word here, statements. These are not considered statements in Java. They're more like um, means of organization. So here we're defining our class. This doesn't actually do anything except for organize the green area. It gives the green area a name called demo. Then this line of code doesn't actually do anything for our program either. It just defines this yellow area. So we have our it's, this is actually our main method. We have our main method header, and then it opens the main method with this curly brace, ends with this curly brace, and so it knows what to highlight yellow. This is actually the only line of code in our program that's actually going to do something, and therefore it's a statement and ends with a semicolon. You'll see that if you forget a semicolon on something and hit compile, it'll tell you semicolon expected. Printing examples. So here's some standard Hello World examples. Notice uh, this is probably what you want things to look like. Hello with a space and then world would print this. If you don't put the space in there, it doesn't print a space in there. So it recognizes spaces inside of the quotation marks. And notice in this example of our print line statement, we didn't put the quotation marks at all. So if we put that in, we're going to get an error. Here's what it would look like. No quotation marks around my string. Uh, and hit compile, and it says that parentheses are expected. Uh, so it, it's trying to guess as to what we need to do to fix it. It's wrong. Putting parentheses there isn't going to fix anything. Uh, so you have to take it with a grain of salt whenever it uh, tells you what it thinks you need to do to correct it you'll probably be a better judge of how to fix things than the compiler will. All right, what else do we have in here? So there's two different types of print statements. We've got print, and we've got print ln, and we'll say that as print line. So here's a print, and here's a print line. Let's compile and run. Doesn't look like it did anything different, but it actually did. Let's see what the differences are. So print prints the information to the screen. That's a no-brainer. What does print line do? It prints the information to the screen and then it moves to a new line. So we can't see it up here, but after it finished printing this, it actually went down to the next line. So let's look at this code here. It says print line hello, so it prints hello, but because it's a print line, the cursor moves right here. So after this line of code is run, you have hello and the cursor sitting down here. Then it says print line world, so it prints world, and because it's a print line, the cursor moves down and the cursor is now sitting down here. In this example, we have print hello, so it prints hello and the cursor is sitting there. It's not a print line, so it doesn't go down to the next line, it's just sitting right there. Then print world says to print, it, just sit, it prints world from the current location of the cursor. And now we're there. Notice there was no space anywhere inside of our quotation marks, so there's no space anywhere in what we printed. If we want to put a space in between those words, we would need to include a space somewhere in our quotation marks like we did here. This says to print hello, so after it prints hello, the cursor is sitting right there. Then it says print space world, and it prints space world. And here is a print line statement with absolutely nothing inside of the parentheses. So it doesn't actually print anything to the screen, but it will move to the next line because it's a print line statement. If you take out the LN and just left it print, it would print nothing to the screen and not move the cursor. So there's no reason to ever type this. This does absolutely nothing. The cursor will not move. But if you put this in, then at least you're moving the cursor. So there's something happening in this line of code. Let's see an example of this in action. I'll double this line of code, uh, and let's see what the differences are. I'm going to say this is text 1, and I'll say this is text 2. Compile and run. 
So now it printed on two different lines. If I take out the print line statement, they're now on the same line. If I wanted to put a blank line in between, let me see what uh, how this looks. Now they're on two different lines. If I want to put a blank line in between, then I can always put an empty print line statement right there. And now you'll see there's a space in between. So you can control the appearance of your output with uh, how you're using print lines. In the notes it talks about how to compile and run. We already talked about that. You can hit this compile button or you can right click up here and say compile. I think this is faster. And then how to run your program would be right click on your uh, class file and run the main method and that'll update your output. Let's take a look at the next set of notes. Next set of notes is over comments. This is pretty short and simple. You'll notice up here at the beginning of your program it says slash slash name. It's a good opportunity for you to type your name in there, take ownership of what you're creating. But the slash slash, as you'll learn here, indicates that it's a comment. So what is a comment? It's uh, purely for information purposes and it's for our benefit as coders. Sometimes we want to leave little notes in our program as to what's happening or you know put your name on it, that kind of stuff, but it is totally ignored by the compiler. So whenever I hit compile and it generates the machine code that is executable, there's nothing inside of the comments that it looks at. It skips up skips all lines of code that start with comments. If you need to type a big long paragraph you can use this type of comment where you start the comment with this symbol and BlueJay does it for you where it just automatically lines everything up real neat looking and then you could type full paragraphs about what's happening in your code and all of this is completely ignored by the compiler it's just a description of what's happening in the program maybe or something that we would use for organization so here's an example of how you might use a print line statement you wouldn't use it to this extreme I wouldn't expect you to comment every single line of code that you wrote but some people would write a line of code and then would put a comment immediately following it either on the same line following it or on the next line following it talking about why they wrote that line of code, what that line of code is going to do. Or, whenever you're uh, trying to f debug your program, let's say you're asking yourself, uh, what would happen if I took this line of code out? How would it affect my output? You don't have to delete it from your program in order to test that out. You could leave it there, but then just comment it out. By putting double slashes, I'm saying let's treat this as a comment and the compiler will ignore it and then I can test what happens. I'm like, oh no, I liked it better with that in there, so I'll take that uh, comment out and leave the code. Let's take a look at lab one. I'm going to open that up. It's a Word document, and I'm going to put that down here in the corner of the screen. I always recommend that you set your screen up like this so that you have access to everything that you need without having to jump around through a bunch of windows. Uh, so you'll create your new uh, new project, new uh, file. I'm just going to delete this and delete this because that was just for our demo. So I have my Lab 1 project. Uh, you'll actually want to call it Lab 1 Hello World, so I named mine incorrectly. You'll do better than me, I'm sure. And I want to create a new class with this code skeleton. And the class name is always... Uh, pointed out here in the code skeleton. This is going to be called Hello World. So if I create a new class and I want one with a main, I'm going to call it Hello World. Okay, here it is. Double click it. Get this set up so I can see everything. Alright, so our code skeleton 
matches with this document and we can start working through this stuff. So this has a bunch of problems for you to work, just different uh, code exercises that you could complete, followed by a larger project at the end. So what I'd like you to do with each one of these is uh, label which problem you're doing with comments. So our first problem, write the code to print hello world. Well that's pretty simple, but I need to identify this as problem one. So I'm going to do slash slash one, it's problem one, and then I can do a system dot out dot print line hello world. And I'm going to hit control shift I to align everything correctly so that looks nicer. I can compile and run and I can see okay I've solved problem one now. Then I can go down and say I'm going to solve problem two. Write the code to print hello world on two different lines. Well I'm just going to do a copy paste job here and make some changes. Uh, the first time I just want to say hello. The second time I want to say world. Compile run. Notice how I compile and run after each problem that I've written just because I want to test it out before I go to the next one. So we've got hello world, that was our problem one. And I've got hello world, that's the solution to problem two. Um, what you might want to do is separate those with a blank space. So I could up here do a system dot out dot print line with nothing in it just to put some space in between my problems. That's uh, what I would prefer that you do. It looks nicer. Also, uh, you'll notice that there's a file called sampleoutput.txt uh, whenever you're looking at all of the files that come with this lab set. Let's take a look at sampleoutput.txt. So this document shows you what your output should look like in this program. So we have problem one matches, problem two matches. So the output that you generate, I've already kind of given you an idea of what your output should look like. And so what you're generating should look just like it. And if it doesn't, then maybe you've made a mistake somewhere. It's also kind of important uh, that you've written the code in the correct way. For example, some of these say do it with exactly two print statements. Well, it's easy to do this with one print statement. I want to see can you do it with two print statements? A little bit of a challenge. Or can you generate this code with exactly three print line statements and one print statement? So yes, it's an inefficient way of doing it, but I want to challenge you. Can you figure out how to make your output look like that with doing exactly what I'm asking you to do? And then of course your code can be different for the ASCII art. The one that I did is a picture of me but you could do whatever image you'd like to create with that one. So that's where yours can be different. All right, good luck with the labs. Let me know if you have any questions. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.